everyone and welcome to the Tuesday Tip. I am Dr. Shea from Learn ABA with Dr. Shea and this is for the Facebook resources group. Although I might post it to YouTube and you might see it another place. Um, what we're talking about this week is how to make behavior analytic graphs in Microsoft Excel uh, using a template that I will put a link to in the comments that I made back in like 2013 but it still works really well and I've been using it ever since. So. This is a quick tutorial on how to use it, uh, but you do know have to you, you do you have to know how to use Excel pretty well. Um, so this is not an Excel tutorial, and it's an Excel on using this template. So it's going to have a client info sheet, and this is going to just feed information to all the other sh sheets down here. So you're going to put your client's name. I made it Kermit Defrog. Um, and then whatever you sell behaviors you want to show up on the reduction data graph, so property discussion, aggression, I think there's room for three or four. An operant definition for each, which you only need if you're using the FAST or something where it's gonna feed into full operant definitions of each behavior. Sorry, click back. Uh, your acquisition programs, and then this, don't touch. See, and I have a little note saying don't touch them. Um, these are titles for each graph on different pages. Now, to warn you, this graph is not totally behavior analytic. For it to be proper, we would get rid of the lines and we would make these all black and white, right? Um, it's not how I had it set up. If you want it to be absolutely perfect, get rid of the lines and make it totally black and white. Um, so these are dates, which I have as very old dates because I made this a very long time ago, but we can make it current for like next week and whatever, right? We can just drop this down to go out as far as you want to go. And we're going to change it to be a short date if you want it to happen in weeks, right? And then you are going to have to go in and make sure that all of this matches up. Um, so these are all linked. If you change the dates, you change filters, that kind of thing, you're going to have to mess with it. But just to give you an idea of how it works. Um, OK, so this I didn't put any D cell behaviors or acquisition programs in these. Uh, or this is just D cell. So what we're going to do is get rid of that from the legend because um, it doesn't make sense to have a thing that doesn't exist on there. We're we'll getting rid of this data that doesn't exist so it doesn't throw anything off. If you're wondering why this looks a little funky, it's usually because something is not running right, so it's the phase lines. Um, if you want a phase line, you insert 100 on the date, although really it should be a break with data. So a phase line technically, you should insert a new line, have the date of the phase line, let's say it's seven, I don't know, 15, right? Oops, <laughs> that looks weird. And we're gonna go to phase line, do 100. And now you have a phase line enter that will move as your dates move. Um, so that's pretty cool, and I have a feeling the dates look funky because the phase line is not lined up yet. I can't select it. Oh, well. In fact, we're just going to go and... No, just select data. Here we go. Select data. We're going to get rid of a blank series. Phase line is in the right place. Shading is almost in the right place. I'll fix the scaling later, or you guys can fix it. You have to be pretty good at Excel to be doing this. But by and large, um, this is kind of how it works. And yeah, there's like some error somewhere, but it is fixable. Let's see if we can mess with the axis for the text of it. No. No, fine, labels, numbers, it linked to source, linked to source. Now they look the same. Uh, that looks pretty good. So, yeah, I'm still not totally sure why the scale's running out, but it's fixable. I've had it happen before, it's just been a while. 
Um, anyway, if you want to do shading, like someone was out of town, their grandparents were visiting, something funky was happening, there's a shading column too. That one you can put 10. For phase line, you have to put 100 because see, 10 will only go half. It's on a separate axis. It's on the second y-axis, which is a log scale from 0 to 100 that you can't see. But that, that's how it works. It's in the series of data, which is great because when you add data to this or go backwards and forwards and move it, um, it'll stay current with the data. So the acquisition data is very similar. We'll get rid of shading. It goes to 1 instead of 100. You could do 100. It doesn't matter. Phase line, again, is 100. This is usually in percentages. So say they got 82% and then 85, and then they had a bad day and went down to 78, but then they went up to 90, right? Um, so it'll graph on here as you go. Again, this is something I made a long time ago. You might have to tweak it and play with it, especially the dates. I also have the QABF on here. Oh, let me scoot this up. Again, it might need some little tweaks. Um, but it has the questions, it has um, your response in there. So you would put the response, right? Um, same for the fast. In this one, you're gonna put yes or no, because it counts the number of yeses. So yes, no, yes. So any question, you have to answer either yes or no for each behavior. This is the yes column, this is the no column, and it starts to add them up depending on where it is, and it will graph your results. Although we all know, I think, how I feel about the FAST. If you're a VCBA, you should not be needing to use these, but if you have to submit them to Medicaid or your company likes them for a report, you know, it's not the worst to have. Uh, the mass is in here too. Again, for each question, you just like say this is always and this is seldom, never, right? Like it'll just graph as you do it while you're interviewing. The ABC data is the coolest thing. This is a pivot table. I don't know if a lot of you have used pivot charts before, but it's awesome. So I have, um, the behaviors don't copy over these. You have to type in just um, manually, or you could do equals and go back to the client info page if you want, but these are all antecedents that generally exist, and these are all categories of consequences that generally exist. You can always add something to the bottom if it's not there and you want it there. But like, let's say for this client on, I don't know, we'll make updates. Oops, 6124, that's 53024, 6224. 6624 because I know the future and we'll get rid of these right so let's say that's all my ABC data and I want to see like how each function is working so in the antecedent of a loud and disruptive environment there's a lot of attention functions happening for adult attention less so in activities uh, when they're told to wait not a lot of attention stuff going on and zero sensory stuff so what if I want to know like um, how often a consequence happens for each antecedent, right? Like that's a thing you can do. So you can add that and get rid of this one. And now the values are going to be the count of antecedent for each consequence, but I want it per behavior, right? So how often do these antecedents happen for the behavior of elopement? They mostly happen in a louder disruptive environment. Um, so let's say for the same person, I wanna see what consequence happens most often per elopement behavior, because it's the only one I have. For fun, we can add pica, so you can see what it looks like with two. And if you don't know how to use a pivot chart, it's a little different. Um, you have pivot chart analyze and design, but it's mostly drag and drop, just play with it. If you add something, you have to press refresh or it won't work. Um, and you can stack things different ways, right? So let's see, I wanna see the consequences with the antecedents or under those, right? But instead of count of, an, count of antecedent, I'd wanna know that with behavior being what's counted, right? So it's kind of cool, just so they look a little bit different, I'll pick 
a new one for pika and we'll make this oh, unpleasant social stimulation all right so now you have to go and refresh it if you add new data but see once there's a new function that'll start showing up too so as many functions as you have let's lengthy chore why not you go back over your pivot table refresh and it's here so whatever is in values is what's going to be counted um, the columns and the legend basically are going to be what's showing up and you can filter it by antecedent you can get rid of filters um, and you can add rows right so let's say we get rid of that that's really confusing I think that's too much going on I don't like that so let's move it over here I like that better right so how often does pica happen when there is no activities or materials you can see here so you can just play with these and move them around um, it's really fun you can make an unlimited lines you can find tons of tutorials on how to make pivot charts uh, but I think it's really cool I've been using it forever and it's been helpful to me so I posted a link to download it um, if you straighten out the the dates on the first one I'll fix it again but uh, that's how I do phase lines and keep them added and with the data and this is the Excel sheet I've been using forever and ever and ever and it has not let me down so I hope that's helpful and let me know what you want to see next week subscribe or like or whatever follow if you want to see more videos like this that will be helpful to you as a practitioner and i also wanted to say i got my moodle site the rat is right uh, up and going so it's an e-learning platform which i already had on like my main informational website but it's a lot better it's a whole lms it'll have embedded discussion forums and it'll automatically generate certificates for you with your bacd id number and all of that jazz you can go back and get them um, so it'll work better. I'm excited about it. Check it out at radisright.com and I will see you guys next week for your Tuesday tip. Thanks so much.